Coming up on Talk is Cheap, is man-made global warming a hoax? We take a look at a seven foot tall hellhound found in the UK and 11 predictions that Notre Dame has made that actually came true. Up next on Talk is Cheap. Talk is cheap, or cheap is talk, and talk is cheap. I am Dan Holfeld, and I am joined by Pete Hallblyde, Dusty Long. We're back. We're back in action. This is what the boys do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody made it through the New Year's in one piece, I see. Did you guys make it to midnight? Uh, I don't party like I used to. Uh, yeah, that makes two of us. I uh, didn't even, I, I waited and I saw the New York uh, ball drop and then promptly crawled into bed and, and went to <laughs> sleep. I, I, yeah, I can't, I, act, I, I can't remember the last time I actually stayed up until midnight local time on uh, New Year's Eve. It's uh, been a while I, for me. Yeah, I used, to, I used to stay up and drink till 6, 7 in the morning just oh, yeah. because the bars wouldn't close and not anymore. A lot of them are closing early now, even before. Yeah. I played video games. I didn't oh. even know it was after midnight, so I was like, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll put the down the old Fallout 4 and, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know if you guys uh, had heard about that uh, Russian or Ukrainian hacker, Romanian hacker, or something predicted that Chicago would have been nuked, was going to get nuked uh, in a false flag in 2015, but, uh, well, that didn't happen, so he was wrong. He had, cla- bastard. he had claimed to hack like Bush's uh, emails and all these other people. I never anyway. heard about that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe maybe uh, one of these upcoming episodes we'll cover and talk about it and uh, and say how wrong he was. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I want to mention here too. Uh, if you go to our, if you follow us on Twitter, we started streaming once in a while the Periscope. We just started that a couple weeks ago on uh, Social Fix. So it's kind of a new experiment. See how it goes and. You know, if we're out on the road somewhere, we're going to stream live sometimes, so so sign up for that. All right, my article, and this one's going to get heated, we know, but it was in the incoming. Pun, pun intended. <laughs> it's going it's to get heated. But... <laughs> it was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new evidence that man-made carbon dioxide does not cause global warming. Uh, the, I'll just skim through the article here because it is very fucking long. I want to go over this first graph right here. This is before present. So we're right here. So we actually had warmer periods in the past. Particularly, you know, even the middle evil, medieval warm period here. And then, you know, the present temperature, even way back here, 10,000 years is basically kind of where we're, we're standing at. And back then they did not have automobiles, power plants, and industries. Allegedly. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. True. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. Allegedly. Uh, yeah, you know, and the population of the of the planet itself was considerably less than it is today. Now, where where is figure two from the Greenland ice core? Okay, so yep. that's temperatures from Gre- Greenland. Greenland. Yep. And it looks like uh, years from before present would be... Well, 2011. This article came yeah, out at least, so call it 2000 or whatever, because I don't. I guess it says modified from Cuffy and Clow 97, so maybe it's 97. But still, um, that that's interesting. I would agree. At times, uh, you know, the globe was cooler than it was today, and and it was warmer at some time, you know, as well. So even in the dinosaur period, it was, you know, we had volcanic eruptions mm-hmm. and that's going to cause some warming there. Yeah, where we had a lot more uh, volcanic activity. The second, like right here, uh, natural thing, El Nino warmed it up. Yeah. And here is a graph. You know, we go through warming and cooling periods. Warms up, cools down. Warms up, cools down. All the while, CO2 is going up. The fifth graph here, this one shows that as the temperature rises, then the CO2 rises. As the temperature falls, the CO2 falls. And where's so the it, CO2 going when it falls? 
into the like oceans mainly. Well, yeah, the the oceans absorb mm-hmm. a lot of that, and you know they they take the CO two from the air, and that mm-hmm. helps counteract supposedly the cooling. But then it it I would like to see what oceanic acid pH levels are over the same time per, period too, because the CO two goes then into carbonic acid, and you know. Dan, I, I understand where the anti-climate um, change folks are coming from and whatnot, um, because yeah, there there is a lot of um, variation and, and outside forces. You know, you have like three giant volcanic eruptions. That's going to do something. Yep. But when we can, on a very short period, start measuring, uh, you know, impacts that we've. And can trace it to man-made causes. I think at least is is wise for folks to take a look at that and, and look for feasible options to help reduce. What, what, kind of, what are we talking about? Impacts? What are we? Uh, well, you know, ocean acidity would be one. I think people are focused a lot on temperature and forget right. about yeah. the pH levels of the ocean. And what even right now is being seen and measurable in some areas of the ocean. Uh, you know, the coral reefs for once, the the phytoplankton that, believe it or not, this phytoplankton provides half of the air we breathe. That's in the ocean. People think of trees and plants as providing oxygen. It does. But the phytoplankton in the ocean pr- produces about half of what we're breathing. And those numbers as well, when you're talking about just slight changes in pH uh, in the ocean acidity, you know, we can knock knock that population all, all the cahoots too. So, so how is pH affecting... If the water's more acidic, it doesn't support certain types of life, you know. And and as the the carbon dioxide gets converted to carbonic acid, the carbonic acid can't break down as quick as it did because we're just dumping too much on. It can, in essence, increase this uh, this pH level or decrease it, make it more acidic in the ocean until okay. it stops, uh, you know, as supporting life. Um, I did happen to notice the articles from 2011. And it would be interesting to see, you know, from, you know, we have a good graph that goes to like 97, 2000 or whatever. Now, let's see what what those numbers look like moving forward. Um, I. Well, let me finish presenting yes, here before. Yeah, we, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, continue. We don't need. Yeah, go ahead. Again, years before present. So we got that fluctuation for in the past. When the temperature gets warmer, it releases carbon dioxide from the ocean that. Because when it cold, when it gets cold, it comes condenses into the ocean, and when it warms up, it goes back out. And also, you got since it's warming up, you're gonna have more plant life, and more animals that are gonna release carbon. And that's you know that's why you get that rise. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next article: Scientists confess global warming twenty two billion dollar scam. I'm gonna go. Th- this is a lengthy article too, but I'm gonna go through the three lies. Number one. There it is, yeah. The world is getting hotter fast. And the graph shows in 98 that it was actually hotter. And this was shown in 2014 here. So in 98, we had a a big increase, and now we're just kind of... But then again, it's going up, down, up, down, up, down. We're on a planet in outer space. It's going to fluctuate. Number two... The oceans are getting warmer, but we can tell by a picture here, we got the polar ice caps in 2013 and then in 2012, they're actually increasing in size. I have a better picture here. And the third lie, humans are causing global warming fast. And the figure that they're using is a 97% of scientists are saying that that's the problem. But there's also a petition with 31,000 scientists that say there is no convincing evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, methane, or other greenhouse gases is causing or will in the foreseeable future cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of the Earth's climate. And I have their petition right here. We urge the United States government to reject global warming agreements that is written in Coyote, Japan, in December 1997, and any other similar propositions or proposals. The proposed limits on greenhouse gases would harm the environment, hinder the advances of science and technology, and damage the health and welfare of mankind. There is no convincing scientific evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, 
methane, or other greenhouse gases will cause or will, in the foreseeable future, catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of Earth's climate. Moreover, there is a substantial amount of evidence that the increase in uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide produce may benef has beneficial effects upon natural plants and animals in the environment. Look at the way the guy wrote physics. I'm just thinking it looks like, like some... a two-year-old. Yeah, that's weird. But... 31,400 scientists and then 9,029 with PhDs. Any comments? I'm waiting for you to finish so okay. I can just go ahead and chew this one all the hell. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even sure where I'm going to start, but I I'll let you exactly go. Where Good. I'm start. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> the scientist here says in order this for carbon dioxide, he actually says CO2 levels are so low we need more, not less to sustain and expand plant growth. And as far as it being harmful to humans, it's currently at 338 parts per million. And the danger level on a sub is 8,000 parts per million. Now, I'm not saying that the climate isn't changing. We're on a planet, outer space. But this is it's happening to all the planets. And I want to play this video here. It's, it's seven and a half minutes long, but i got to play the whole thing just to... We can make com stop and make comments through it so we don't get the flag sure. on copyrights. <laughs> so we don't get flagged on copyrights if we well, break it up. Well, here's the proof. Interplanetary climate that. change, which is NASA's hottest secret. Now, we can look through and find the smoking gun of all 2012 scholarship because we can look at all the planets and the sun and see changes just like we see on Earth. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that. This is a composite graph of solar activity based on core samples from the Antarctic and the Arctic. And what you're seeing is the total amount of sunspot activity. This is what it's been doing in the last few years. We are now at a point where the only time the solar activity was higher than it was right now, just so conveniently happens to be 11,000 years ago, which in ancient teaching is associated with what? What happened 11,000 years ago? Atlantis fell, right? Could that be related to the solar activity? Hell yeah. So we're now at the strongest point in 8,000 years since that happened. Mercury has grown a magnetic field when Messenger went by in 2008 that was not seen in the 70s with Mariner 10. That's a big change in Mercury. Venus has had a 2,500% increase in this green glow on the night side that you can see there. That's active oxygen. So the atmosphere of Venus is changing back into something that's breathable. Mars is growing clouds and ozone, as you can see right here. That, there were no clouds on Mars before. That's brand new. The polar ice caps are melting on Mars, and they're actually calling it global warming in the mainstream media. But there's no SUVs on Mars, not that I've ever seen. Pretty interesting, huh? Oh, but allegedly. Allegedly, yeah, there might be the secrets. <laughs> programs up there yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. all right i'm gonna I, I can't be quite much longer all right so all these damn <laughs> graphs that they're showing ten thousand years i just had this debate the other day okay let's hear it. it's all ten thousand years ten thousand years ago this is this ten thousand years ago this is this ten thousand all right so ten thousand years ago is just as hot as it is now that doesn't mean in any way shape or form that we are going to go through this osculating change and we just happen to have a ten thousand year scale it doesn't prove a damn thing it just proves that ten thousand years ago it was the same uh, height now, same temperature. Same temperature. So now, here's what you got to look up. Look up the drastic change in temperature in the last 10, 15, or 20 years. This is what I don't like about this type of evidence. If I go back far enough in time, I can show you something that's about the same thing as this happening right now. It doesn't matter. If we were to say innovation of uh, science or whatnot, well, in the Renaissance era, there's a huge amount of um, you know innovation and whatnot. We had the telescope and so on. So we could graph the two things and show, oh, every hundred years that we have this huge scientific you know, breakthrough. You could do that. Now, what you got to look at is the present, because that's what the global climate change is all about. It's not talking about 10,000 years ago. No. They're talking about how we've changed the planet in the last 20, 30 years since the industrial age and how that has spiked so rapidly. And this is the reason why I don't like this argument, and I think it's, it's – uh, it's just propaganda. It's that way to make people think, oh, it's fine. Because I've proven to you that 10,000 years ago, it's just like that. So that means for 10,000 years, it's been fine. It went back down. So we have another 10,000 years on this planet where we're just going to be all right. But if you were to look up evidence where it's the last 20 years, 50 years or whatnot, it's a steady incline. 
It's not osculating. It's steadily growing. Well, right, it grows but I mean, we had those, those temperatures in the past, though, so yeah. I just don't understand. But they don't grow as fast in the past. I mean, it's simple science. If you take something that's been in the earth, the, the carbon dioxide, say coal, has been in the earth, hasn't been burned, that's where the, the earth stored that, that carbon or whatnot, or wherever it should, should be. And then you put bring it all up and you start burning it. Not to mention the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest and the deforestation of most every other damn country. Matter of fact, I think it's Tahiti or no Haiti or some Haiti someplace. They've actually gotten rid of all their goddamn trees to make coal so they can survive the damn winter months. That's a huge amount of trees. Now you just said that the oceans go ahead and, and present fifty percent of the yeah uh, about fifty percent of our breathable okay. oxygen comes. The other fifty percent comes from vegetation. Mm-hmm. Well. We uh, every minute an acre in the Amazon rainforest is, is hacked and slashed. I mean, you can't. There's, isn't there a lot more plants than there was back in the past now too, though? Well, How could it, there be? You know, there. If you look but at the, uh, across America and forestation, we've increased our forested lands in America. But we also but, went ahead and we took down all the oak savanna yeah. that's in the plains. The plains were oak savanna. You know, everyone thinks of. The Great Plains as being this big, flat, grassy area. In all reality, there were, I mean, where do they think they got all the wood for all those buildings and all the towns? Well, yeah, I'm not going to say that cutting trees down is good or anything. They, they yeah. literally <laughs> went down through the, the, you know, through the plains, and they, not, they cut down every single tree there was, and they built all these places. That's why you had the Dust Bowl anyway. I mean, there's, there's nothing there for it. Yeah, we might have increased our forestation, forested areas here in America, but we're knocking them out everywhere else. And the whole thing about global warming or global ch- climate change, whatever you want to call it, is a really stupid point. And he asked me if you want to debate it anyway. Because here's the, you know, this is my stand on it. True or not, how much better off would we all be with greener energy? Absolutely. Yeah, there, I'm there, not there's debating there's that. There's and, and, and I think, and I, I, know, I know you're not saying that, that, oh, we should be able to yeah. pollute and not look for alternative energy sources. But I think kind of what from Dan's perspective is, and it's somewhat I agree, agree with it is that what measures can we put in place for what cost and what effect you know what what is the the long term effect because if we're if we're talking about you know something that's going to cost a say a, a local manufacturer three hundred thousand dollars a year to implement and it's really not going to have any impact in the whole scheme of things of reducing pollution reducing carbon or methane or greenhouse my biggest thing here is this gives the government another excuse just to tax us instead of having oh here's greener technology use this stuff they throw a carbon tax on, and that just gets passed on to us, the consumers. Oh, absolutely. So that's yeah, just yeah because situation. they just jack up the end, yeah. end cost price, and it's, yeah. And here we got this UFO technology that should be utilized. Yep, yep. We well, need to start investing in Tesla-free energy yeah. stuff, yeah. And they, that's the thing that pisses me off, too. We just had the G, G12 summit or whatever, the, the environmental summit. Yep. We go every damn year, or every two or whatever it is. We all talk about, oh, all the countries are getting together. We're going to stop doing, you know— coal we're gonna start investing in greener energy and we don't have wind farms one of the simplest things that we've perfected it in a way there's you know wind farms are easy enough to do solar panels that are coming out now are even better and there's no energy there's no money going into these things look at a bp uh advertisement they're making cleaner burning coal yeah there's the stupidest thing i ever heard oh we've taken coal and we made it cleaner what did you put it in Dawn dishwashing detergent before you? Have, it's coal. It's it's not dirty as much as it's the carbon that's in the coal. Yeah. You can't get rid of that. It's a goddamn chemical bond. So this type of propaganda where BP is going, hey, we're, we've put a billion dollars in cleaner burning coal is bullshit. They need to be going and saying, I put a billion dollars in, um, say, wind farms. Whether or not you believe in the data, it just makes perfect sense as, as human nature, humankind. That we start investing into these greener energies. Look at China. It could be three o'clock in the middle. Of, I think it's not Shanghai. Beijing. They're in Beijing, oh, yeah. and it is. It looks like the like uh, Monday morning. Really, really foggy. It's it, you know you can't see anything. People are running around with masks. It's three o'clock in the damn afternoon. It looked like dusk or dawn with fog because of all the smog. Mm-hmm. No one goes outside without putting uh, a mask on. And that's that's greenhouse gases. Look at L.A. L.A. is perpetually stuck in this oh, fog. Yeah. Chicago's so, got nasty yeah. stuff in it, too. You know? So even if you were to say this is 10,000 years ago and you know what, climate change is fine, you're still a damn idiot because <laughs> if, if climate change is fine, so be it. But look at what you're breathing in these damn cities. Yep. And there's easy ways around it. We already have wind farms. You already have solar. 
uh, uh, not Milan, Italy or someplace over there. They just got that uh, salt. You ever see these things? It has a bunch of mirrors on the bottom. It radiates up to the a pillar on the top. And it heats this salt liquid up that goes down and it boils water. It creates a turbine. Hugely efficient. Does a great job of it. And, you know, the, they don't want you this. This whole shit is all about not getting you and you and me off of coal, nuclear, well, or anything the else. the greedy capitalists. That's what it is. Yeah, it's just that, money. you know, and they, they don't want to give that up. They're no. making billions of dollars. That's why they're going to tell you they put all that money into cleaner burning coal when instead they should be putting the money into any other type of green and energy. Yep. But they don't like that because even if they were to tax us on it, it's free. I mean, really. I mean, I just watched, read an article in Nevada. They said they didn't want solar power. This is how... Not all y'all, but this is how I think stupid like, people are. I think it was North Carolina. North or Carolina something. or someplace yeah, something, like yeah. we don't or want Alabama solar power because Arkansas. it'll suck up all the energy from the sun. Yeah, what? we don't want it to use all the sun's <laughs> that's energy. That's the stupidest yeah. thing I've ever heard. Who, well, who said this? It's in, it was in the it's, news. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's, it's it was Politician on the news. Yeah, if you Google it, you'll see it. It's oh uh, my god. It was, yeah, and and there was another gal saying that. Plants around solar panel panels will die off because they can't get enough sun. Yeah. So solar panels taking <laughs> sure. it all. This uh, is what's wrong with everything. Yeah. Oh my god. Stupid rains, man. So. Well, let's let's finish up this sure, video yeah, a little bit. Yeah, go it's, for it. It's interesting. So keep on yelling. <laughs> <laughs> How much was he paid by Jupiter the government to do that? Well, look at that, he's making a mockery of it. were disappearing you know? between '97 and 2000, three of them, and then they all meld into one. And this scientist, Dr. Philip Marcus, believed it would cause Jupiter to warm by 18 degrees in only 10 years. Now, if that happened on Earth, what would happen to all life on Earth as we know it? Toast. It's toast. So there's a massive global warming going on with Jupiter. That was the prediction based on what would happen in 2000. That's about the time he did this prediction. He said 10 years. Look at what happens eight years later. Jupiter is having raging thunderstorms and global upheaval. Towering storms more than 100 kilometers tall. The rare storms a sign of recent turmoil on the planet. And here's the picture. These bright hot spots were never seen before. This is extra heat that shouldn't be there, and the colors of the rings are changing. Then you go out to Saturn, you're seeing this plasma torus that's grown. All this red area wasn't there before. That's all this charged energy coming from the sun. Jupiter Maybe the sun's ready to blow up. I just didn't have time to show you in this presentation because we had to shorten it. You're seeing massive x-rays coming out from the what is all near the equator of Saturn. This is happening to all the planets. Again, you're seeing a hot spot just like the one I just showed you on Jupiter. So we have 10,000 years ago was as hot as, as hot as this. Yeah. <laughs> this is happening now. Where the heck did all this energy come from? The planet just goes energy comes out. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. That's professional. Yeah, Uranus, as of 1986, kind of looked like green pea soup with hardly any peas. Just the green part. Nothing to see. <laughs> Uranus. It's just very flat. Now, this is false color, so that's why this is brighter than this. We're not so much concerned about the color, we're concerned about these little guys. Because that's what we didn't see before. These are huge storms. Now, remember also, Voyager 2 swept by Uranus. So it saw the whole planet. It didn't just see the side that we see. So even with a satellite going past, we're now seeing the... all these storms that were not Voyager there Voyager 2 had a damn 35 millimeter camera. Come yeah. 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 on now. It was called featureless as a cue ball, but now Eric Karkoschka is saying, really big, big changes. That's because you had a really big, is big, the, different is camera. Is that the guy from uh, the big NASA. German guy from Die Hard? Ground-based oh observations show seasonal brightness changes, not well understood. Oh, moving on. They try to downplay this stuff. Yeah, and he's making a but mockery of it. But this is interplanetary yeah, climate change. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, because NASA's This is something that's happening to every planet. Of course. And all they do is they tell you that it's based on the tilt angle of the axis to the sun. The sun is heating it up because the pole is tilting or because the equator is tilting. And whatever the planet is doing, they just alter it for that planet and say, oh, well, it's got to be caused by the tilt angle of the planet relative to the center of the, uh, of the sun. Not so. Neptune... 1989, relatively few bright clouds, but between 96 and 2002, there's a 40% increase in brightness in the near infrared range. This is very significant because obviously this could not be caused by anything we normally understand. And it's the same thing that's happening throughout the rest of the solar system. It's all doing the same stuff. What you're gonna see now is a description a visual description of how it's been changing. So check this out. 
you watch down here, you can start to see how it grows over just six years. So that's phenomenal. I mean, that's like turning on a lampshade and having light suddenly burst out of the planet that wasn't there before. So what happens the in our solar system means it's fine for is, Earth. I, well, that's what, I'm wondering what his point is here. His point is this is why we're having the climate change, change on Earth. We're just observing it and, re and assigning it incorrectly to emissions and all that stuff. It should be the, the sun, carbon. in other words. Huh? Well, this is the thing. Pluto is going through it, too, here. Is experiencing global These are way out. Even though it's moving away from the sun, there's been a we thought Pluto was a planet until just a little while ago. Mm -hmm. right. They're thinking about bringing it back. This whole system tells us that Earth changes are not unique to the Earth. They're happening everywhere in the solar system. This seems but even on Earth, to me. I'd like to see we're seeing things that are not attributable of a 10, to the study. ordinary climate change. I don't care what happens on Venus and Mars. That we would think of as being caught. Why? Because that's, that's part of the solar system, though. So it's part of the solar system, but solar. it's a different type of atmosphere. So you got if you planets were, blowing up, right, so and that ain't no big deal. Fine. If you have you have it's Venus, worth, it's worth considering. You have, you need you to have consider. Mars on one side that doesn't have enough atmosphere, and then you have what Venus on the other side that has or too so much we're told. atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. Venus, Venus has uh, too much greenhouse gases, and that's why it's 800 degrees at the damn level. And then you have Mars on the other side that has no atmosphere; and it's cold and, and barren. So we're right in the between of that Goldilocks area. You have yeah. too close, too much. Too far away, not enough, and you have us right in the middle. So even if everything were to change, and like you said, your own words, is we're a planet flying through space, and we're oscillating up and down and everything else. Okay, fine, dandy. So all these changes happen, but how long have we been observing them? And how do well do we understand how what we're observing is caused by the sun? Ten years we've been looking at Uranus. And we're... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Caption that motherfucker. Speak for yourself, <laughs> Dusty. We've been looking at, how do you say it? Uranus? Uranus. Uranus. Ten years we've been looking at Uranus, and we see a change. That doesn't mean anything in my book, because we've only been looking at it for 10, 20 years. I mean, we, we're only now looking at things with uh, high you know, uh, cameras that we can actually see something. So that kind so of you're evidence rather, is you'd, substantial. You're saying you'd rather see I'd a study rather, from yeah, long before. I would rather see a study that has to do right here on Earth. You can't outweigh those other planets, though. They're part of Why the, not? I haven't been the solar watching system. Them. And I don't live on them, for one. Two, we haven't been watching <laughs> them very long. Yeah. We haven't been watching them for more than you know, 10, 15 years, 20 years, but with cameras that we can actually see these things. We don't know if maybe every 10 years they just have these solar storms like that, and that's what they do. That has nothing to do with the greenhouse gases and the emissions and the global climate change that's happening yeah, to, here. To draw any solid uh, conclusions or say correlations between them from this first go at a data set i think would be premature mm -hmm. but if we're if we're noticing atmospheric activity and temperatures rising on all the planets in the solar system earth included well it's worthy of note it but is. what but let's see now what happens is or rather if the other planets start cooling and Earth keeps going or Earth starts cooling, the other one keeps going and it's that correlation. Maybe it's just coincidental that right now we just happen to be catching each other at the same kind of yeah. kind of thing. Because we but, just started look, watching. But I think to, to Dusty's point, I don't think we've had the technology to know what happened previously, you know, on those planets. So there is definitely a lack of data, in my opinion, too, on the other planets. But it's now's the time to pay attention to it and start trying. in here again. Uh, things got a little heated, so I never got to finish the rest of this video. He goes through exactly what's changing on planet Earth now. But even on Earth, we're seeing things that are not attributable to the ordinary climate change that we would think of as being caused by SUVs. Volcanic activity since 1875 has gone up by over 500%. Sea level is increasing. Temperature is increasing. Tornado activity is increasing. Natural disasters are increasing. The inflation-adjusted economic losses are increasing. Here you see the, the red indicates how much heat there is at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, on the floor of the ocean. And then what you're seeing is 85 and 96, or 99, rather. So in 14 years, you see a substantial warming on the bottom of the ocean. We can't disregard that fact. The changes are happening on the Earth as well heating the bottom from the middle of the earth. So, I mean, that's huge. You can't not count that. You definitely can't disregard it. No, no, not right now. There's, no, there, there's, I think there's, there's not enough data to disregard it or accept it as, oh, 
it, it's all it, everything's happening because of a cycle of the sun or or what have you. It's just too premature. You don't have enough evidence. Yeah, you don't have enough to, data to really to, draw to a good that. conclusion yeah. e- uh, either way. Yep. Either way, but yeah. I, yeah, but to your but to your point, I agree. I think you need to to be mindful of it, know that it's going on. Yeah, that's and a good to point. your point, you don't. It's still not any excuse not to explore greener, cleaner options for fuel and, and energy. Yeah, and stuff. I mean, if you bring the stuff out, people are going to use it. They're not going to just throw a carbon tax. People are going to just. It's just about control. That carbon mm-hmm. tax. Is, oh, yeah. That's what it I don't always. like about it. It's it's an, yet another way to to separate, make that middle class a little bit smaller, yeah. a little bit further away from the elite, you know, and and they're just everybody that and that's I agree with capitalism to a degree, but when you have the the extent of capitalism that we're seeing today, where it's anything you can do just to get more money from people, it's it's wrong. It's no one no one ever said we should put a ceiling to that, and no one's ever content. You make a hundred million dollars a year. That person wants to make two hundred million dollars the next yeah. year, you know, and any way they can. It's well, you just like that Captain Douchebag with the AIDS pill or whatever that bought that oh. pill, you know, and then he just got arrested on securities frauds and stuff. And, AIDS pill. What is this? Well, that it was that yeah, twenty-seven year old CEO of some pharma company bought this, the rights to this one pill and jacked up the price on it five thousand percent. It's some yep. sort of pill for the that helps treat a certain condition associated with HIV. So it went from like thirteen dollars a pill to seven hundred and fifty dollars a pill. Yeah, and. Uh, and he took a lot of flack for it, and he said he was going to lower the prices, and he really didn't. He just allowed more bulk ordering discounts or Is something. Is that what Charlie Sheen's using then? Oh, it could be. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so no one can afford it right now. But no, come to find out, a few weeks ago he was arrested on securities and wire fraud. We are allowing those types of things to happen. That's what's wrong with this damn world in the first place. He goes ahead, and he's like, oh, I have a pill that'll help you know, cure AIDS or cancer or whatever else. Well, I'm going to buy it, jack the price up, and rob these poor, sick mm-hmm. people. Just for more money. Just for more money. And how the hell does that work? And then he, another guy said, I can make the same thing, and I'll sell it for 3 bucks a pop. And the dude was going to sue him. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, you're not going to do that for 3 bucks a pop. You know, you take away from my profit, so I'm going to sue you. No. It's not how about saving. Nothing is ever about saving human lives. No. It's about making money Boy. or gaining power. Yeah, and how the hell do you go to bed at night? Yeah, you, know, that's you, don't, just care, you don't care. You're sociopathic. Apparently. That's what it is. You I saw don't... a video the other day. A guy walked around New York with a blazer on. He had $1 bills taped everywhere. And he held a sign and said, take some if you need some. People in three-piece suits, this lady with a uh, uh, Louis Vuitton bag, walked up and just started pulling dollar bills off of him. And he's like, do you really need this? He's like, is that a Louis Vuitton bag? She goes, yeah, but I have a nail appointment tomorrow. And pulled off 10 20 15 bucks. He, uh, dude looks like a banker type thing, all the suit and everything else. Walks by, sees it, walks back, starts pulling money off. The guy's like, do you really need this? That's like a, an Armani suit. He's like, well, it's free. He takes off. This is what got me. He walks over. Here's this guy living on the streets. He's got a dog. He's like, really, dude? I mean, can I just have as much as I want? You guy's like, yeah, sure. Take as much as you want. $2. Takes two bucks. Two bucks. Maybe four. Maybe. Ow. But anyway, he only takes a few bucks. He's like, I just need a little bit for me and the dog so we can get something to eat. So here you got a guy on the street, and the reason he said it, the guy says, well, why don't you take more? He says, because there's other people out there that need it. Yeah. So you're living on the streets. You're pissed poor broke. You don't got nothing to you. The guy comes up and starts offering you money. You only take a little bit. So you, that guy can help others that are like you. Yep. And these other rich motherfuckers are walking around going, oh, free money. I'll take it. Take as much as I can get. Yeah, yep. and that's fine. You know what? There's a certain degree that everyone's going to take that little bit. You know, if you're going to give me 20 bucks because – you know, I'm cool, then yeah, sure, I'll put you <laughs> Well, bucks. you're safe there. You but at this, yeah, so, yeah, no one ever does that for yeah. you. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, these people don't need the money. They take it because they're greedy. I mean, they're self-centered and greedy, and that's what I don't like about society and as a whole. The same guy with that pill. Oh, I have a, a cure for AIDS. I have a cure for cancer, whatever it happens to be. No, I'm going to go ahead and I'm only going to give you so much or I'm going to keep you dead and everything else. It's the same thing with this whole bullshit here. Mm-hmm. The whole, you know, climate change. What happens? I heard on the radio the other day. If we went to green energy, this is a propaganda for the Republicans, I think, or something. If we went to green energy, it would cost every single American $5,000 more a year to heat their homes. How the hell? For five grand, we can heat our own homes indefinitely with solar panels, I mean, you know? But even if you went to green energy, how does it cost more? And he was saying the infrastructure put it up. That's completely stupid. I mean, what it is, is it's like, I don't want to get off oil because I'm BP. Mm-hmm. I make my money on oil. So I'm going to pay all these damn politicians, and then I'm going to go ahead and run this bullshit and get off 
or stay on oil and coal and all this and, and natural gas. Natural gas burns better. But see, that doesn't make sense because he had wind uh, tide turbines and and solar powers and all this other stuff. I mean, I read a study that said we go to Nevada where it's just all desert. Mm-hmm. You can put a ten mile by ten mile square of all solar panels, and you could power almost all of America with it. Ten miles by ten miles of solar panels with these new ones that uh, capture more of the. Oh light. yeah, they're every day, day. They're getting better at gaining yeah. gaining more of the. What price on something like that would be though? It, what would it be? You you know you'd have the infrastructure to build the infrastructure. Put one it out there, one it nuclear cost. power plant is fifteen billion dollars. Oh, so really? for fifteen yeah. billion dollars, you can put up a lot of fucking solar, solar panels, panels, man. Yeah. And then you just gotta wire it into the what the already existing infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So I mean, what are you missing out on? Then. What do you have to do otherwise? You got to go out there and, and shake it up. Now, of course, the sand, they talk about the covering because of the sandstorms and whatnot. But ultimately, there's little upkeep to a solar power. There's little to do. I mean, Nevada is constantly in sunlight. Why aren't we doing it? And even if there was an increase of the price, you got to pay every month or every year just by a, a marginal amount. So you go ahead and, and pay that off, $50 billion, whatever. After that, it's free. I mean... You're not paying 15 guys shoveling coal into a damn boiler to create energy. You have 15 guys that got to walk around the perimeter. Yeah, but the thing is, after they pay it off, they'll still keep charging you because that's oh, like yeah. what they well, do with the toll. They, they, want to they make, have to. Yeah, well, you need to make money so you can put up the next yeah. ones when they go bad and there's repair and stuff. But at least uh, well, yeah, air is going to be so a lot cleaner. It should come down a little bit. Yeah, but it, yeah, if my heat electric bill decided to go up five grand in one year and it was going to be that moving forward... I could install my own wind or solar right on my, right on my house and or, generate my own. Isn't power. it more like twenty five thousand you'd need for a self generation solar panel? I don't. Oh, you I can, don't think it's quite that I much. I got a lot of preppers I know online, and these guys are making their own wind turbines with junk. Yeah, I mean, like dryers. They have uh, um, these little dryer things. A dryer with a copper band in the back, and, it, and they've turned that around, and they. Make a wind turbine out of it. There's people that are running off the grid right now with very little money. Most of them built themselves. And it depends on how much energy you need. I mean, if you're going to be running like two light bulbs in a small refrigerator, you don't need as much energy right. as if you want like a three-story, six-bedroom house with all the fixings, you know. So. But there's people that live completely off the grid. They have those uh, land ships, uh, homes that are built uh, out in Arizona, and they use glass bottles in, in, the, in the walls because it's all stucco or mud. They put glass bottles in there with the opening in the house and the uh, the outside, the round and the outside of the wall, right? And all they do is a mud bottle, mud bottle, and, they, and it makes a cool design. What that does is during the day, that uh, bottle is open and it, that captures the heat, warms the air up, and then at night, the, the air actually in the bottle is still warm and it you know comes out into the uh, living area. The same thing with uh, used tire walls; these are awesome. Big windows in the front of your house. The sunlight comes in, and the back wall of the front of the house has uh, another wall, but it has tires in it. And it's only showing about, I don't know, you say your tire is about this big around, it only shows a, you know, a yeah, quarter of yeah. it, right? And the sun beats on that all day long. The tire, of course, is made black, made of rubber, collects the heat, and then throughout the night, it radiates back that heat into the home. it ca- captures it all in. It yeah. has rain water, uh, c- captures rain, and then, of course, they have solar panels, wind pa- panels, up there, completely off the grid, self-sufficient. And they built their home that way. Matter of fact, I, I'm looking at buying a house, and the first thing I want to do is make sure I get a little bit more money. I would love to put up a wind turbine or solar power because, I mean, I was uh, when I was in Oklahoma, we had those big ice storms, and we were without power. That's horrible. I was three days without power. Oh, yeah. You can't heat. You can't do anything. So I'm thinking to myself, if I ever build a house, I'm going to have solar powers. I'm going to have a battery because that way I can... You're, turn on a light, you're not going to be able to use everything, but you can no. get the get the microwave working or the yeah. stovetop heating up or something. Exactly. And so, so the global climate change thing, I, I'm not. I think the damn oil, I, it just pisses me off because well, they want it, ahead and they want to use this information. They want to scare the American people by saying it's going to cost you too much. It's all fake. It's all bullshit. In all reality, if we went green energy, we'd just be better off. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's all it is. Yep. And what what is the cost that we are willing to pay to do that? I'm I'm just the cost. I don't want to be taxed to death. That's the, only my concern. But you're being taxed now for the uh, the energy you're using. Yeah, you know, and and well, they're, not if they had a carbon tax on their SUVs and whatever the hell they're going to sneak it in there somewhere. They're oh, going to yeah. go ahead and they tax you for the amount of gas you use now in your home. The carbon tax is going to be the same thing. Yeah, they'll probably just have it under the same name. You won't even know it. Yeah, maybe they'll, we just, they'll be a, yeah, maybe we got a carbon tax now. We don't even know. Yeah, it. we don't even know. It. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, every time they've raised 
property taxes yep. or gas taxes and stuff. I mean, they're just looking for a new way to new way to get more money from us. But I don't think that we should necessarily ignore opportunities to be cleaner, less pollution, and all that. Because Agreed. Agreed. Known according to ancient texts as black shuck, uh, believed to be origin from the old English word which means black demon, a seven foot tall beast appears to be the bringer of death in many ancient tales over 500 years ago. This was a seven foot to 18 foot or seven foot to 10 foot black dog with red eyes and he was called the Hellhound. Uh, I've read about this a little bit and whatnot. Now, look at this. They found the remains in a uh, abbey. So, well, they don't know this a damn thing, but yeah, okay. So, there is a male dog standing at least seven feet in height, weighing about 200 pounds. This remains could be this whole black shuck they always talked about. And, of course, it says the story is originated from somewhere, and who knows, it could have been original from the dog that was buried here. There's the the dog in question. So the reason I brought this up. How do they know it has red eyes? Well, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this particular. However, if filled. it's a seven-foot dog, that's going to be something that's kind of hard to miss. Seven know? feet long, seven, seven feet, feet tall. Tall, like on its fours or on its hind legs? Probably on its fours, I would say. See, because 200 pounds seems light to me, doesn't it? I mean, you can see, you know, a 200-pound wolf doesn't stand anywhere near seven. It could be a skinny mother. Well, you great know, a greyhound Dane. or great Danes. You know, they're probably, what, four and a half, five feet on the back? Well, the Irish wolfhound that I've always wanted, they can get to the shoulder, they can get about four or five feet, I've heard. And they weigh about 200 pounds, from what I understand. I've always wanted one. So this is a seven-foot tall doggy. Um, the reason I brought this up isn't real. You know, it's an interesting article. They found this. It was under like 30 inches of uh, dirt, and it was all cool and whatnot. But here's what I liked the most about it is, he said it, but I also believe it. Uh, the story. We're always talking about stories, people, you know, things that we've heard or things that have been passed down through ancient texts and whatnot. It had to originate from somewhere, and it could have been originated from this dog. So, like we always say, some there's always a little bit of that truth in these things. So here this black shuck who has been talked about, this hellhound, um, some of the uh, uh, novels I read, and then also some of the documentaries I've watched stuff, talk about this this dog that would show up and then people would die. Um, so interesting that, you know, here we got this little bit of, um, maybe, maybe truth to, to support that folk story. And that was what, you know, that's pretty much it. That's what I like about it. So it is interesting. Yeah. I've never heard of that. I mean, yeah, local folklore. This is, this is cool. Local folklore states that the black shuck made its, its presence during a brutal storm on August 4th, 1577. At Trinity Church in, I can't say it, almost seven miles from uh, Suffolk. Uh, the Blimey. fearful villagers found shelter inside the church, but despite the massive wooden doors guarding the church, the black shuck managed to enter. So. He can walk through doors? He probably knocked the fuck. He probably just pissed on it. Maybe he farted on it. They call it the black dog or the devil in such a likeness, running all down through the body with a great, or all along down the body of the church with great swiftness and incredible haste among the people, in a visible form and shape, passed between two persons as they were kneeling upon their knees and occupied in prayer as it seemed, wrung the necks of both of them in one instant clean backward. Both in one instant clean backward. In so it's much that even in a moment English would they kneel just translation. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of awkward, wasn't it? Yeah. Interesting, yeah. I, you know, there, we we know that there's been a, a, a history of times of uh, giant uh, mammals on the planet. You know, you got the giant beaver or, or you know, Gigantopithecus. It was a giant beaver. Yeah, it's like it was. That was like in southern <laughs> United States. It was like, yeah, uh, you know, I, I guess one I don't know. Big how, hairy. Beaver. Yeah, you know, beavers get pretty big, but this one's like seven, eight feet long or something. There's just a giant. Slob. Biggest beaver I ever did see. Yeah, uh -huh. it'd be a big one. You, so I mean, you know, so much can, I can go with there. I'm not quite, you know, and even with Great Danes today, I mean, you imagine a, a half, half fer, feral Great Dane that would uh, terrorize villages. You know, oh, very so. Yeah, I mean, if this thing was this a really big ass dog, but then it ran around with rabies or wild or nuts or whatever it happened to be, that would be scary as hell. It is crazy. So, where was this found again? Uh, England. England. Blytheburg. Okay, UK. Pretty intense episode so far. The global warming thing was uh, 
was it was interesting and uh and of course the black shuck it's called shuck yeah uh is pretty cool too so we're gonna go and take another step into the even weirder i guess and it's been a while since I've looked into Nostradamus and, you know, really, you know, years back I'd poke around and, and, and look into him a little bit, but a, a pretty enigmatic individual, you know, I mean, this guy back in the, was it the 1500s writes these books of predictions um, after I believe he would look in some sort of cauldron with slurry and then things would, pictures would form and he'd write them down. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to look uh, and see what, kind of predictions folks think he got true. So I found this uh, in the Business Insider, 11 shockingly accurate predictions from Nostradamus. So I think we all know who Nostradamus is. He's a 15, 1500s, 16th century is, seer. Is he related to Negro Damas? I'm not, <laughs> Nosferatu. I'm not sure who that is. And I, De Chappelle. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I miss that shit. Okay, yeah. Um, I... I, I, I I'm not. I know who Dave Chappelle is. I know his. I, I do remember some of his stuff, but I'm not going to comment on that. I don't think it's appropriate, Dan. <laughs> okay, so prediction number one, and we'll kind of maybe hit through these quick or skip over some or something. But um, it's pretty interesting. The young lion will overcome the older one on the field of combat in a single battle. He will pierce his eye through a golden cage, two wounds made one. He then dies a cruel death. Okay, messed up, right? That's not very specific. No. You'll kind of notice that theme. But right. Francis King Henry II lined up to joust Gabriel, Comte de, de Montgomery, Seigneur de Lorge, a nobleman, six years his junior, in 1559. Montgomery's lance tilted up, splintered into two shards, one through the king's visor, one uh, the other in his temple, 10 days before dying in his bed. Uh, some reports say their shields displayed lion emblems, but uh, you know, um, that's one that they're they're kind of reaching there a little bit. I thought that was interesting. Gets better. Okay, <laughs> great fire of London. The blood of the just will be lacking in London. Burnt up in the fire of sixty six. The ancient lady will topple from her high place. Many of the same sect will be killed. September second, sixteen sixty six. A small fire in Thomas Fariner's bakery turned into a three day blaze that consumed the city, known as the Great Fire of London. Thousands of houses and businesses burned. It looks like eight people died or whatever. But, okay, so there's there's the second one. Okay, it's kind of a stretch, but we did get a number, right? 66, you know? Oh, the blood of the just might refer... Oh, so as a result of this fire, the rats scattered carrying the Black Plague around everywhere. Is that dope? Yeah, that is, man. So... Okay, there you go. There's number two. A little bit of a stretch. Nostradamus says, okay, French Revolution. Songs, chants, and demands will come from the enslaved, held captive by the nobility in their prisons. At a later date, brainless idiots will take these as divine utterances. Uh, in 1789, the French people decided they'd have enough. They revolted, stormed the Bastille, a Paris fortress used as a prison. Um, so are the French the idiots? Or who's the idiots? Oh. You know, they don't really address that. Idiots At a later world. date, brainless idiots will take these as divine utterances. So is there a, is there a portion of this where yeah, somebody a, later came by and said somehow the word of God was being spoken over there or something? I don't know. Songs, mm -hmm. chants, and demands will come from the enslaved. Or it's just a shot at people like us who say that, you know, <laughs> hey, look at it, you predicted it. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. Uh, Napoleon's Conquest. Pawne Loran, more fire than blood, swimming in praise, the great man hurries to the confluence. He will refuse entry to the magpies. Pampa and endurance will confine them. I mean, how do you even begin to understand what the hell that means? Pawne and Loran reference th three towns in Paris, although the last is na actually named Oleron. By using this... Nostra Alderaan? Like in Star Ol Wars? Alderaan. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Nostradamus employed one of his favorite devices, the anagram. By rearranging the cities, the letters spell Napoleon Roy, which eer eerily resembles Napoleon, the king of French. More fire than a blood may refer to the non-noble lineage of Napoleon who took power during a coup. Refused to entry... Refuse entry to the magpies could re refer to the Pope's Pius VI and VII, both of, whom, both of whom Napoleon imprisoned. Pretty interesting that Pawne Loran is interest, interesting. 
Napoleon, Napoleon Roy, it's close. Okay, interesting. All right, well, the next one we have here uh, is, is interesting as well. King Philip II of Spain's reign. For seven years, Philip's fortunes will prosper. He will reduce the Arab army. Then halfway through, things will, per, per, will perplexedly turn against him. A young onion will de- destroy his future. So, interesting, they... He calls out specifically Philip, so there they look toward King Philips of Spain, started ruling the country in 1556, which is interesting because if you remember, Napoleon, or Napoleon Nostradamus wrote the book in 1555, so you're specifically talking about King Philip, possibly. Mm. Um, seven could be interpreted biblically, meaning a long time. His success, Philip's success, however, came to an end in 1587 with the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, who was also Catholic. Her death ended his alliance with England. He attempted to invade, thwarted him. Um, The quatrain, oh, and I should say Napoleon wrote in quatrains, which is verse of four lines. So that's why we we take four lines. Maybe he only had four lines on his paper. Yeah, well, he wrote many, (laughs) many, many more, but it's quatrains. That's why you'll see quatrain come up. Uh... He Cheap, he <laughs> slaughtered a bunch of Arabs and he called for the Muslim expulsion from Spain. And then, lastly, the young onion maybe refers to the thirty-six-year-old Henry IV of France. Um, how the hell do you figure a young onion meant? I don't. I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> draw your own conclusions. It has layers. <laughs> maybe you have to be like versed in Nostradamus uh, lingo or something to understand that. Louis Pasteur, you know, he uh, discovered pasteurizing, you know, mm-hmm. you know, if yeah. anybody works in the milk or dairy industry, you might have heard, uh, understand what pasteurizing does. I don't know anybody like that. Yeah, right. I don't know anybody like that That's either. might be a conspiracy on its own. Pasteurizing? Yeah, because you're actually losing some of the minerals. Nutrients. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The hotter you cook it, the more nutrients you get. Yeah, I, I prefer my milk straight from the teat anyway. <laughs> um <laughs> The, the lost thing is discovered, hidden for many centuries. Pasteur will be celebrated almost as a godlike figure. So again, he calls out Pasteur by name, okay? This is when the moon completes her great cycle, but by other rumors he shall be dishonored. So almost 300 years later, okay, William Pasteur is born. Nostradamus called him out by name. He discovered the growth of microorganisms causes fermentation. So, hey, all right. That discovery also proved bacteria doesn't simply appear spontaneously as previously thought. Instead, it grows from already living organisms. What he didn't first propose in his germ theory, he convinced uh, much of Europe of its validity. Oh, he didn't propose it. The germ theory, he didn't propose it. He convinced people of its validity. Um, He invented the pasteurization process. He also led to the creation of vaccines for rabies and anthrax. So you've got milk pasteurization and improves the s- shelf life of milk, rabies and anthrax vaccination. So, you know, almost he's re- revered pretty highly in, you know, a scientific field. Okay. And the, the dishonoring part is that in 1995, some historian showed that Pasteur incorporated arrivals findings to make his anthrax f- vaccine functional maybe dishonoring the great uh, scientist. So interesting. So we've got Nostradamus calling Pasteur out by name three, uh, 300 years before he was even born and pretty close. You know, you got to take some liberties there to, uh, but I mean, this guy was probably eating peyote, looking at a little bubbling pot. You got to give him some, <laughs> give him some slack. Hitler. From the depths of West Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the east. And beasts ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister. Into a cage of iron will the great one be drawn when the child of Germany observes nothing. I would like to know, was Germany a country in 1555? Must have been by then, huh? Yeah. I would think so. Okay. That's a good question. Yeah. yeah. But Hitler, who was born to poor parents in, in Western Europe, 300 and... Years later, you know, after Nostradamus wrote it. And pretty interesting about Germany and then Hister. You know, again, you know, what psychedelics is Nostradamus on? <laughs> we'll, we'll give him a, a little leeway there on that slip. Uh, he obviously, he convinced uh, a bunch of people to form the Axis powers. 
He uh, allied with Japan in the east. Um, Hister is an old name for the Danube, although many believe it to be a typo. Hitler was born just miles from that river in what was then Austria-Hungary, also known as the Danube Monarchy. Remember, Nostradamus often incorporated anagrams such as Hister into his writing. Yeah, I say what you will about Hitler, but his public speaking was spot on. I mean, well, and he had an audience that was needed to hear something. Did he have a teleprompter? But, uh, no. Uh, but on top of that, so. even when he was first coming, I mean, the the man could speak with such passion. He really, really captured his uh, his audience. He was a, there wasn't much uh, talking. I thought it was just, I've got my day. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of ger- <laughs> German gibberish. Okay, we're going to skip on. We're going to talk about the atomic bomb a little bit. Okay, I told you these are going to get a little better. The heavenly dart with stretch will with stretch its course. Mostly will stretch its course. Death in the speaking, a great achievement. The proud nation brought low by the stone in the tree. Rumors of a monstrous human bring purge than expiation. Wow. 1945, the atomic bomb. Those who escaped the immediate detonation suffered painful radiation uh, poisoning. A stone in the tree could describe the shape of the mushroom cloud that engulfed the sky. It also could mean a land-bound object. So anyway, if you look back, okay, the heavenly dart will stretch its course, death in the speaking, a great achievement. The proud nation brought low by the stone in the tree. Uh, Okay. Doesn't really call it Japan there, does it? JFK assassination. The ancient task will be completed. From on high, evil will fall on the great man. A dead innocent will be accused of the dead deed. A dead innocent will be accused of the deed. The guilty on will remain in the mist. Well, that could be a lot of. Yeah, right. Undoubtedly, came on high. You know, it entered his head from roof level. Lee Harvey Oswald. He didn't live long enough to face trial because I think it was Jack Ruby, right? No, a Dallas night. No, a uh, night caller killed him while in police call. He was that Jack Ruby. Might be. Oswald obviously claimed he was innocent. I think we know that. 61% of Americans believe it's conspiracy. But you can kind of see where some of these Nostradamus uh, predictions are a little uh, a little iffy. But then on September 11th, the prediction, the sky will burn at 45 degrees. Fire approaches the great new city. By fire, he will destroy their city. And a cold and cruel heart, blood will pour. Mercy to none. 45 degrees what well scholars interpret that to mean reference to new york city's proximity to the 45th latitude or the burning buildings would fall creating a 45 degree angle to the ground but they didn't they collapsed straight down at free fall speeds yeah Yeah. very close to free fall speeds so some people still think that that's legit so yep so anyway yeah, um, we can get into that, couldn't we? Uh, overall, if these are like shockingly accurate predictions, I'd hate to see the ones that these folks feel are not that close. But uh, pretty interesting. I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about it um, a little bit. I think we've we've heard about Nostradamus predicting the, this and that. I think it's pretty cool when when you can almost get names to line up and stuff. Oh too. yeah, that so is that, really cool. I mean, I that gives a little bit more validity. All yeah, of a sudden. yeah. yeah. Uh, how a uh, small iota, but you know, yeah. it's. I guess you know, you put a million monkeys in a room with typewriters. Eventually, they'll get Shakespeare, right? So yeah, very true. All right, that's what I have. I hate monkeys. I just do not like. <laughs> I like bananas, not monkeys. So I don't like bananas either. Why don't you like monkeys? Because monkeys are constantly put in these damn zoos, and everyone thinks they're just these cute little animals. But if you look into it. Horrible animals. I mean, they throw their turds at you. No, a, <laughs> that's what I was saying. I, the but the but uh, bonobos are a cool uh, primate. Uh, okay, some primates are yeah. cool, but they have expeditions going into the jungle where baboons were chasing people down, murdering them, you oh, know, yeah. and all sorts of stuff like that. They had a there was a I don't know it's a Chicago or someplace where they have a, a monkey island and then they have a moat around it so the monkeys can't get off. And uh, they always said, "Oh, the monkeys won't cross the water, won't cross the water." Well, I guess one got hungry. Swam or jumped over the water, climbed up there and started chewing on this this lady's uh, head. She was in a wheelchair and started actually eating her because it was hungry. So these like all these people are like, oh, monkeys are so cute. I'm like, they're no, like horrible animals. Yeah, you need yeah. to like watch out. There's people with monkeys in their houses that the monkeys go nuts and rip faces off of people yeah. and shit. Did she live? Yeah, she lived. Yeah. Oh. 
So yeah, I I think monkeys are you know they are the special forces of the animal kingdom. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. If you had the lions and the tigers and the elephants all <laughs> escape from the zoo, you're like. Shit, we're in trouble. You have the monkeys. I mean, come on, try to shoot one of those little jumping bastards while he's trying oh, to. Oh yeah, eat they you got around. opposable thumbs and yeah. stuff. They can like turn doorknobs. They and can shit. think. Yeah, you know, yeah. they can solve problems. Those things are dangerous as hell. They all need to be just. They're gonna say lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, you're worried about them, but when the monkeys are free, yeah, that's well, why I've never had the post-apocalyptic type thing that I'm yeah. always waiting for. And they said that people either. Uh, let all the zoo animals out. Planet of the Apes. Or well, yeah, that's scary. a great documentary. I love that. <laughs> that's scary as hell. <laughs> Worst scary movie. Like I'm not scared of much, but you know what? Planet of the Apes is like, no, this is a documentary. We all need to be scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it sure is. That that happened, like, what was that, 15 years ago that, that happened? Yeah, I'm still What are you talking about? Just, the oh. documentary of oh, the Planet of the Apes documentary. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Notre Dame's way of saying this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, that's what we had in good side sidebar on... All right, thank you guys for joining us this week. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'm hoping you're enjoying the new year. I'm hoping to make resolutions that you can't keep because we know everybody can keep those damn things. And uh, join us next week. <laughs>